I'm Brian Freer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is trends in the periodic table. Although you're probably used to using the periodic table by now, there are a few trends in it which your teacher will need you to know. So we're going to go over those right now. There are only three trends to remember. The first one is electronegativity. This is very relevant when working with ions. What it is, is the pull the nucleus has on the outermost electron. And how that works is, let me show this to you on a table, is it's at its smallest down here, and increases up this way to be at its highest over here. Let me show you why it works. So let's work over here. At our smallest, we have francium, atomic number 87. That means 87 protons in the nucleus. It's a big nucleus. Well, a nucleus is positively charged, and the electrons spinning around here are negatively charged. So, the electrons are going to be attracted inwards. With francium, this electron is way out there. So it's going to have a very small attraction inwards. And plus, there are all these other electrons spinning around in their own orbits. And so what happens is something called electron shielding. Whenever an electron is behind another electron, the electron behind actually takes less of a pull inwards. So not much attraction over here. But what if we take it down to where it's at its highest? Helium, atomic number two. I can draw this one out in detail. So you've got two protons in the nucleus circled by two electrons. In this one, the electrons are as close to the nucleus as they can get, and you've got a very positive nucleus. What results is an extremely strong pull inwards. This is actually going to be less than hydrogen, because hydrogen has only one electron and only one proton. You see, electrons in the same energy level tend to have the same pull on them, regardless. But if you added more protons, as with helium, that pull increases. The second one you'll need to remember is ionization energy. This is very relevant to forming ions. What it is, is the energy needed to pull off the outermost electron. It follows the same pattern as electronegativity. Smallest over here, highest over here. That's because electronegativity is very relevant to it. The stronger the pull the nucleus has on the electron, the harder it's going to get off. So over here, where the pull is the strongest, it's going to be the hardest to pull that outermost electron off. When you're here, down here, when it's the smallest, it's going to be easiest to pull it off. So less energy needed. The third trend you'll need to remember is atomic radius. The term speaks for itself. The atomic radius is just how much distance there is from the middle of the atom in the nucleus to the furthest part outside. That follows the opposite trend. Over here, at the top right hand corner, it's at its smallest. And down here in the lower left, it's at its largest. Why is this? We'll just go back to electronegativity. The strongest pull is up here, where atomic radius is smallest. The reason atomic radius is small is because the pull is strong enough to actually shrink the radius a little, a bit. And that, and down here, the atom's already huge, and the pull is rather small, so the radius doesn't shrink very much. To recap, the three trends you need to know are electronegativity, pull the nucleus has on the outermost electron, ionization energy, the energy needed to pull that electron off, and atomic radius, or how big the atom is. The trends for electronegativity and ionization energy go from smallest here to largest over here. And the opposite trend is true for atomic radius. Smallest up here, largest down here. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.